Jackson, um, very nice to, uh, to see you. Um, Emeritus Professor of Management Systems at the University of Hull, um, OBE, um, studied politics, philosophy and economics at, at the University of Oxford and uh, particularly um, known for um, systems thinking and applications of systems thinking to the field of management, according to, um, to Wikipedia. And you've written and, and published many, many things. Um, uh, your first book was written in 1991, Systems Methodology for the Management Sciences. Oh, don't remind me, so long ago. Your second book, which I have here, was Systems Approaches to Management. And then I can I can hardly pick it up, but, but your third <laughs> recent book, um, a very uh, comprehensive book, Critical Systems Thinking and the Management of Complexity. So, um, so we're, we're in good hands to ask these questions. So thanks very much for talking to me today, oh, Mike. Thank you. Um, the first question I wanted to ask you, which I've been um, asking everyone in these in these series of interviews, is is could you describe your sort of foundational ideas? What how do you how do you envisage the the complex world or the world of of, of um, the systemic world? What should, where do you start from when you're thinking um, about application? Um, yeah, okay. You you, you mentioned that I did um, politics, philosophy, and, and economics. Uh, Jean, you, and you couldn't do sociology uh, at Oxford in those days when I when I studied there, but it was sociology that I was mainly interested in, and and I, I took the courses that you could study in, mm -hmm. in sociology, uh, and so I'm a, my background was was social science. So uh, I, I come at uh, social complexity uh, from a somewhat different angle than those who have a, a physical science background. And I, I think, therefore, I've always been aware of social complexity, uh, and I've always regarded it in terms of what people are saying about complexity. And I know that the world is highly complex because people say very different things about it. Um, so my, my starting point then to orientate what, what people say about it is probably philosophy. Uh, and I was I'm interested in in, in Resch's book on complexity, a little philosophical tome and he talks about uh, complexity in the world and um, he, he talks about uh, complexity also deriving from the way people see the world and, and the interaction between uh, those two things. Um, I'm interested in Edgar Moran's uh, v uh, distinction between uh, restricted complexity, a view that you can model the complexity of the world and his own favoured approach, uh, what she regards more complex thinking, uh, where you regard uh, the world as exhibiting general complexity. Uh, and so it, 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 you can only have partial views of it. Uh, you, you, can't you can't understand the whole. You, you, any model is partial and uh, any attempt to understand it is partial. So I then become interested, uh, less, in fact, less in trying to find uh, a foundation uh, for my understanding of the world, but to look at it from how other people see complexity and uh, and derive from that the idea that the world must be complex, as I say, because there are so many different versions of it. In complexity theory, you have uh, originally the, the chaos theory idea, uh, then the Santa Fe idea, you have the work um, deriving from Prigogine and the tradition that Peter Allen and yourself have uh, taken forward. Um, you, you, and then you have those who, who have derived their thinking about complexity a bit more from the social science. Social science. I'm not saying that they were social science scientists themselves. Many of them had uh, natural science backgrounds. But but you have um, Ralph Stacey's original work, which was a kind of functionalist, incremental view of complexity, then moving towards a much more interpretive view. Uh, complex responsive processes derived from people like Elias and, and Mead. Um, you, you have Paul Sillier's uh, making links with postmodernism. Uh, and, and you have um, David Byrne with a sort of critical complexity, calls it, does he? Um, a critical realist kind of approach to complexity. So, all these versions of, uh, of the way in which the world is complex and um, uh, and, I, and I'm interested in that. It, it's a kind of 
if you like, the second order approach to complexity. Um, I don't myself have a, a, a view of what of how the world is complex. I just know it is complex and I, I see all these people trying to understand how it's complex uh, and uh, coming to somewhat different conclusions. So, so um, what, what you're describing really is a, is a, a world that, that is not deterministic. It cannot be known entirely, the sort of Moran uh, general um, complexity view. And, and the need for pluralism, the, the fact that, that many people are looking at, at this complex world through different lenses with yeah. shining lights on different aspects of it. Yeah, I would, I would accept all the, all the usual words that are used to describe complexity, non-linearity and uh, indeterminism and, and pluralistic viewpoints, all, all those words that are, are used um, by... Um, uh, by complexity theorists, I think Cilia's, Paul Cilia's makes a nice list of them, uh, and you, you can't disagree with those words, but they, they are used differently by different complexity theorists. Uh, and I do, I do have the impression, uh, in some cases, that um, people who are attracted by the social sciences and different social science traditions attach complexity theory to social theories which they're already uh, familiar with uh, uh, and already in tune with yes. and so complexity theory follows from some kind of social scientific commitment yes. uh, and that makes me suspicious about how coherent complexity theory is as an approach to social complexity yes. no, it, it seems to cop seems to copy the divisions that already exist in social science rather than being able to overcome them Yes, well, it's certainly not a coherent um, uh, body of thinking. I, I agree. And I, I get uncomfortable when um, people in social sciences kind of talk about fractal management or, yes. you know, um, or, or take some of the artifacts of certain sorts of mathematical models as if they're real. And then, mm. and then go and look for them in, in the real world. But, but let me let me move you on to um, to the kind of how do you how do you deal with all this complexity in the world and um, the role of, of of systems thinking in in that and systems methods. Um, it, there's obviously a lot of overlap between systems thinking and complexity thinking. Do you see? Do, how would you describe those kind of any differences or overlaps, or is it a a bit of an illusion that they're different. Um, I, th I think it's a bit of an illusion that they're different. Uh, I think they both have strengths and both have different things to uh, to offer. Um, uh, I the, the notion of complex adaptive systems, for example, was introduced by uh, Walter Buckley. He, he wrote a book, "Society as a Complex Adaptive System," in 1968. Um, and uh, that was very much a process orientation. Uh, and he was, he was complaining, uh, was Walter Buckley, about Parsonian theories and um, uh, mechanical theories and organismic theories being translated into the social sciences. He, he wanted a much more process orientation. Uh, and he derived that process orientation from the work of... Uh, von Bertalanffy and, and Wiener. So um, th there's a tendency among some complexity theorists to represent systems theory as being more concerned with stability and structures and systems and less with process. But, but I find that quite hard to take. Um, if we go back you know, right to the beginnings of systems theory with um, Bogdanov and the technology and the theory of organization, he's, he talks as much about that the processes whereby systems come into being and, and how they then disintegrate, uh, as he does about how we manage stability. Um, von, von Bertalanffy is all about um, um, open systems seeking with difficulty to achieve a, a, a steady state in interrelationship with their uh, environments. And of course, Brigadier uh, drew upon on Bertalanffy, uh, Vena, it's a negative entropy machines and organisms can maintain themselves as in, in a negative ne state because, uh, but that's difficult uh, against the, uh, the, the 
the, the run of entropy that leads to disorganization. So I, I think that the relationship between process and structure has always been there in, in systems thinking. And I, I do take exception to the notion that complexity theory has discovered something completely new um, in that respect. I, I think I, what I um, wonder about in, in terms of, of application is when, when I seem to engage with more the systems community and I um, sometimes get asked to give talks and engage with, with various systems societies, that, that people want, um, it, it, you know, in the audience, they want methods that, that seem to apply more to structure and stability. They, they don't like being told that sometimes what we have to look at is how things emerge, you know, or, or maybe our role is to dissolve certain very locked in structures. Mm. So th there's, there seems to be a tendency um, in, it, it, to, in my experience in the systems world or the, the applications, the people who, who are managers and want to use it, to want to it, it have the idea that by and large things are stable and if, if only you can see the systemic patterns, then you can yeah. work with them, as opposed to work with the idea of, of kind of emergence, evolution, very yeah. local, local um, localization, those kind of things. I, I wonder what you think about that. Have we, have we kind of, you know, got to hung up on one side of the, the equation? Um, yeah, I, I think so. That there was, um, I, 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 I wouldn't want to defend. The, there are different schools in systems yeah. thinking as there are in complexity theory, but the, the, the there's a very interesting divide right at the beginning of systems. Uh, of system theory as we understand it, following on from von Bertalanffy. Uh, now, von Bertalanffy, of course, was in, as interested in emergent properties as he was with um, uh, with finding general system laws. Yes. But but after von Bertalanffy, some people tried to started to concentrate on um, general systems laws at all levels. So you get Miller's book, Living Systems, um, which is looking at uh, structural laws which underpin how systems uh, operate uh, from the level of the cell. And the final chapter is about Belgium as a living system. Belgium, the country, is a living right. system. Um, and the tome is even longer than that one of mine. And I possibly wouldn't recommend anybody reading it. But there's that strand. And there are still people, general systems theorists, who look for those patterns that hold across all system types. But uh, there was another trend, and, and certainly the one that I'm more interested in, and I think has won the battle in systems thinking, um, which stemmed from Bolding and, and Bolding's um, article, General System Theory, the Skeleton of a Science. And Bolding looks at systems in terms of levels of complexity, um, and uh, there are nine levels of complexity in there. Uh, and he, he looks at the emergent properties at each level. Uh, and he says that, that al although some of the laws which apply to systems at lower levels, uh, feedback might be an example, you know, have application and are useful for our thinking about uh, way people operate uh, uh, and the way social organizations operate. Uh, the fact that there are emergent properties at each level requires you to, uh, to take a different form of understanding at those higher levels of complexity. Uh, and once you get um, the image uh, coming about, and the image is the capacity to escape, if you like, cause-effect relationships, uh, and to, to break the chain of causality, because you're no longer responding to a stimulus, you, you, you're responding more to what the image that you have is telling you about the world, then you need an entirely different form of understanding and an entirely different way of uh, intervening because you're dealing with the way people see the world uh, ra rather rather than just the way that people are interacting uh, people are being impacted by causal relationships mm -hmm. so out of that work of bolding um, you, you have a, ho a whole host of different systems approaches um, uh, and I asked the question okay there, there are systems models at lower levels which describe interrelated feedback, feed forward loops and so on. How applicable are they to social systems? Well, they have some. There are cybernetic models. How applicable are they to social systems? Well, there's some application. 
but but also the, there are systems models which take very seriously the notion of the image and um, uh, Bolding influenced Vickers who influenced Checkland uh, and I, incidentally I did my math, master's degree at Lancaster with Peter Checkland and so on. that's the systems my systems background um, uh, and, and Checkland's work is wholly process <coughs> orientated uh, and is potentially disruptive of uh, of systems and, and it's about breaking down, creating, renewing, challenging uh, people's perspectives, uh, the way the way that they see the world, the way that they interact, and therefore the the kinds of stable structures that they create at any particular time. Yeah. Yes, it 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 just it can feel, and I agree, I agree with you about um, you know, Peter Checklin's work is is in is more processual, but it can sometimes feel that we've ended up with managers saying, I can just analyze the system or I can just design this or you know I can I can build my organization like this and then it'll be okay we can manage complexity as if complexity is something that's bad and you know, part of the counter that, to that is that sometimes having diversity you know having variation looking mm. at what's emerging which are which are kind of more qualitative processes are equally as important yeah but that's not that's not Yes, there, there are systems models of that kind. Um, I mean, a classic one is the viable system model and there, there are adherents to the viable system model who believe that if you designed any organization in that way, mm. then it would necessarily be incredibly efficient, and mm. able to achieve its goals, it would be viable over time, it would be, mm. uh, it would be sustainable. Now, I, I think that that model has, has, a, has a lot to offer and, so, and sometimes we, um, we, we want to maintain organizations in a in an adaptive state in relationship to their environments because we value what they're doing mm. and, and so I have great respect for that side of uh, systems thinking uh, but the other side of, uh, of systems thinking um, and it's not just Checkland it's it's the work of people like uh, Churchman and, and the, the field of, of system design that comes from his thinking. I mean, Churchman has a set of aphorisms and uh, the one that's best known is that the system's approach begins when first you see the world through the eyes of another. Uh, and he's always looking for alter, the systems for him are not in the world, they're, they're in our minds and yeah. the way we, we re reflect upon the world. Uh, and he, he all, uh, another book he wrote was called Challenge to Reason. And uh, another book he wrote was called The System's Approach and Its Enemies. Uh, and and th these are pluralistic books all the time looking for challenges to exist existing ways of, of, of seeing things. Yes, um, I, I, I think that's a very valuable, the, the point about, you know, that the mind in, in a sense, uh, you know, that, that systems are an interior as well as an exterior thing. I just sometimes wonder whether people include in their thinking about systems, the fact that sometimes there won't, it won't be systemic. You know, it will be a mess, or it will be emerging, and whether we um, yeah. we, we kind of equip managers with, um, with 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 the balance of you know sometimes things get very fixed and locked in, um, sometimes things are very fuzzy and 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 indeterminate around them, um, and and what we want to do sometimes is make it more um, uh, uh, resilient, um, which can include having some diversity and, and messiness. Yeah. I, I, I accept all that, Jean, and, and uh, we're in the same game in that respect, in, in the traditional management thinking, the mechanistic thinking, the stuff that derives from uh, Newton and determinacy and all the rest of it, it, it still, still dominates the way that decision makers see the world and therefore operate in the world. Mm -hmm. And complexity theorists uh, uh, say, well, uh, this is some. This is a, a version of the way reality is that we need to challenge and shatter sometimes because it doesn't operate that way. Mm. Uh, and, and, and and I would feel the same about uh, uh, system thinking. And, and I may I would want to introduce managers to a set of alternative worldviews, um, perspectives, systemic perspectives through which they can view the world uh, and therefore see it differently to the way that the mechanistic perspective yes. offers them. Now, one of those alternatives would be an organismic vision, which does give you a radically different uh, 
perspective on the way that you might manage organizations, far more localized autonomy corresponding to the sort of biological autonomy that exists in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in animals and people. But, but, also, but, but there are also the processual views, um, which uh, people like Churchman and, and, and Checkland and Acoff uh, bring, bring, to the, bring to the fore, um, where there are no systems in the world, not concerned with systems in the world. The world is a mess, as you say. The, the, Acoff introduced that concept. The world is messy, sets of interacting issues. Uh, perhaps we can bring some kind of systemic logic to it and articulate the way that people think about the world in systems terms to see what, uh, to see what they're suggesting about uh, how it is and how it needs to be changed. But that's a process of, of taking people through uh, their thinking and alternative ways of thinking. And then you, you also, you know, certainly want to ask the question, it was Churchman again who asked the question, should this organization be allowed to survive or should we be seeking to help it to commit suicide? Yeah. That's a systemic question. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, and there are systems approaches which respond to the idea that the way that processes are developed and the structures that are therefore being created are disadvantageous to many of the stakeholders, and therefore we have to somehow find ways of representing their views. Yeah. So systems thinking, rather like complexity thing, goes across the, the yeah. spectrum in offering alternative perspectives to uh, managers about how they can see the world and how they might operate in, yeah. in the world. And, and of course, all of those things may be true, um, led, led on top of each other. You know, I, I was thinking about, um, you know, if you were working in certain parts of the world, I won't mention the, the bit of the part of the world I had in mind, but you know, that there are some, you know, you might have tribal structures that are very locked in. You may, you may have a very, nascent and emergent political structure that's that's powerless you may have lots of corruption and that yeah. you're, you have led and interwoven chaotic elements locked in elements and kind of nascent growing positive elements and how do you how do you work with all those at the same time is is a you know is an interesting yeah. question well yeah. that, that's what certainly what i've been trying to to, to think about because if, if you give up the notion that you you, you have an ontological view on the nature of complexity. Mm. You, you're all the time bringing different ways of understanding complexity to the fore. Mm. Um, uh, therefore, it's an epistemological view. Uh, uh, and it's, if I understand the world this way, um, what do I get? And what does it mean about how I go about seeking to change it? Mm. Um, and now that's responding, I think, exactly to what you've just described. In other words, uh, a highly complex situation will have all kinds of multidimensional elements within it, uh, some of which may be, a, 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 as you put it, more, more fixed in, more stable, or others more processual, the thing may be moving and dynamic, of course it is. So you, you, you're all the time exploring different ways of looking at it. Uh, if, if you like to try and understand which of those different perspectives, and, and I operate as I was describing, with different systemic perspectives, mechanistic, organismic, uh, the processual sort of cultural, political, and then also looking for disadvantage, looking for inter interaction. Which of these systemic perspectives is giving you some sort of handle and traction on what might lead to improvement in the system at that point in time? But I don't ever, I wouldn't ever seek to try and prejudge or know that. Um, um, it, it's about exploring uh, those different viewpoints. Yeah. And in systems, methodological terms, the methodology which correspond to those viewpoints in trying to intervene in it. Yes, and I, I think all I'm trying to add to that, which I completely understand and, and agree with, is that different aspects of the system will be um, locked in at the same time as and interacting with aspects of the system that are, that are chaotic and aspects of the system that, that are emerging. And so we can't, in a sense, preference one view of that situation we're really mm. trying to um say to people those are all interwoven they're they're all you know if i'm a if i'm a, a person in a tribe you know in that country i i um i experience myself in a locked in tribal structure i experience yeah. myself in a chaotic corrupt political structure and in an, an in emerging growth of civil society let's say and they're all true to me as an individual, that they're, they're, they're all true and all interwoven. 
And mm. I, 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 perhaps I'm taking myself onto my third question to you. No, no, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, but to understand those different perspectives, uh, situations, you have to use multi-perspectival, multi-perspectival approach to it. Yeah. And, th and then they will start to appear. And, if, if you go in with just one perspective, you'll only see one aspect of yeah. that. But then we need a, a meta view, which which says because that because we can't we we can start by distinguishing those different aspects. But because they're interwoven, we have to have a meta position, which says how do you work with interwoven different aspects? Perhaps I don't think I don't think we do. Um, I, I I don't I, I I certainly believed that some long time ago and thought we could allocate different systems approaches to different sets of problems and and look for interactions and interrelationships and find. Uh, find the variables which were important. That's the system dynamics type approach. Uh, it doesn't respond to the, to the degree of complexity we face in the yeah. world, unfortunately. Yeah. And so we'll only ever have these partial views. Yeah. And rather than trying to get a meta view, I'd like to critique each of the views from the perspectives of the others, if you yeah. see what I mean. I, I do. I, I'm just, I, I will. Uh, I'll, 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 we'll leave this in, in my life. I'll just, uh, just make this, this point. I'm, all I'm saying is that in a particular situation you, you will have a, 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 a combination of factors some of which are, are locked in some of which are chaotic some of which have emergent and I sometimes wonder whether we're good at, at helping people to know how to work with them to, to, to recognize that it, it's all of them different aspects of the problem uh, are, are, can have different dynamics and we have to work with that com complexity but I, I I suspect we're agreeing actually I think so yeah I think so <laughs> But, but let me let me move you on to my third and, and final question is which is is really to do with you know we we have a field we've talked about you know the the slightly uncomfortable sometimes separation between complexity thinkers and systems thinkers although some people feel that more more than others but we, we have a sort of academic um community of, of sorts and 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 the future that in in global terms seems to be getting um you know, more complex, more difficult, you know, pandemics, uh, mm. populism, increasing inequality, um, in many cases, um, climate change, you know, so we, we have a kind of global inter interconnected world with, with global issues, but national politics, you know, particular economic views, all interwoven at the same time. Mm. What do you feel the, the systems and complexity community have to offer that? And what do we need to do to kind of move towards that challenge? in the future yeah thank you um the we we have an academic world but but how badly underrepresented is our type of thinking in that in that academic world um if anything gone backwards you know it's a real struggle to maintain uh, interdisciplinary transdisciplinary work in in universities with all the various pressures from research assessment exercise and so such excellence framework it's called nowadays um, so there, there are only a few islands in universities where system thinking and complexity theory is studied, really. Uh, and and this, this has got to be a nonsense because uh, the world's problems, and you outlined some of them, climate change, inequality. And, um, uh, we, we had Noam Chomsky last night giving a lecture online to, to a, a, a group at Hull University. Oh my God, you know, what a fantastic analysis, but how depressing, yeah. how depressing, um, you know, how do we escape climate change? We know about it, we can't do anything about it. How do we es escape the threat of nuclear war? We know about it, but we can't do anything about it. How do we escape the threat of future pandemics? We know the threat, but we seem ill-equipped. The, the world is crying out for systems thinking, you know, and uh, as many of us constantly say, and the, the, many of the leading organizations in the world, the United Nations, OECD, the World Health Organization, all the time saying the world is complex and we need complexity and systems thinking approaches to address this complexity. But then there's this huge gap to what to the to the study and, and to the practice of these ideas. And is that what I want to bridge, if you like? That's that would be my main concern. It, it would be saying that I do believe we've got some extremely valuable ideas, concepts, ways of acting here, um, ways of 
dealing with the issues that that, that we we've, we've, we've got and we make we need to make the bridge to decision makers and and to convince them uh, that what we have is something that is extremely useful um, it, it's not uh, and in doing that we, we must never be arrogant we, we, we must not say that we've got the solutions because clearly we haven't you know we haven't got the solutions we, but we can offer something we, we can offer better ways of um, uh, of, of thinking about how to if you like the, thinking about how to maintain stability in complex organisations uh, of how to if, if we go to COVID-19 uh, we uh, the if I think of it in systems terms, I can see that if we thought in advance, if we'd been prepared for it in systemically, then we we'd have looked at whether we had the resources available in terms of PPE, the, the staffing in the health service, the capacity to deal with this kind of thing, the logistics to get things to the right places. We'd have had to look at the system and the way that it might. Um, deal with COVID-19, the extent to which you needed degrees of centralization to manage things, but also uh, autonomous structures so we could deal with local issues as they arise and take advantage of local knowledge and local skills. Mm -hmm. You'd have needed, um, you, you, you'd have needed uh, far more discussion and agreement and involvement among people and development of mutual understanding about who was responsible for what, um, to, to, to ensure that policies could be uh, enacted, trusted, you know, at, at all levels. And you needed to think in advance about uh, who, who might be disadvantaged by the way that the system responded to COVID-19. I mean, it's crazy to me that that only came about quite late in it, you know, suddenly people realized that some groups were suffering worse than others from this pandemic. How could that possibly only conceived of after the thing had got started? Why had nobody thought of that in advance? Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, uh, of course, decision makers are doing their, their best. They're, they're dealing with complexity beyond which us academics mainly think about. But we still nevertheless have do ways of, do have ways of thinking. Um, and from the systems approach, multi-perspectival ways of thinking and multi-methodological ways of acting that can give a more inclusive uh, way of dealing with these issues. Mm -hmm. And, and perhaps what, what underpins all that as well is, is to try and help uh, policymakers and, and politicians and, and leaders kind of understand that the world is complex, whether you like it or not, that it's interwoven, whether you like it or not. And, um, and that, that, you know, nonlinear change happens, you know, episodic, you know, runaway change happens. It's, yeah. it, it's like the mindsets. We need to, we need to educate help people to expand their mindset about the, the nature of reality in, in some ways. Is, that, that's exactly right. If, if you speak to, to, to senior people in the civil service uh, and those responsible for training, they bash their heads against the wall, you know, because, because the traditional mechanistic mindset still remains. Yeah. Uh, of course, there are lots of structural issues which may, may make sure that that happens. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, addressing the, the set of issues um, and, I, and I, I think we've developed ideas that can help with that um, yeah yeah it, so that that's where I see the most important thing as being as as making this bridge between the ideas that we have that we regard as important yeah. uh, but not getting too carried away with them you know they they can aid and assist decision makers mm -hmm. but getting decision makers on their side uh, to recognize that they've got to change the world view uh, and uh, we can offer them something in, in helping them to do that, and that will improve their capacity to deal with the complexity, which they're all saying is the main problem that they face. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Mike, for that very interesting discussion. And, <laughs> Thanks, uh, Jean. I appreciate it. <laughs>